Hello everyone, Sean Carey with Migration Productions and welcome back to Exploring the Natural World. Thanks for tuning in. Today I'm here on Grimsey Island in Iceland. And if you watched any of my other videos I did on Grimsey Island, you'll notice I'm sitting on the same rock I shot one of the other videos on. Just happens to be a very nice rock to sit on and record these videos and have a spectacular view. Lots of birds up and down the cliff, razorbills, murres, puffins, kittiwakes, fulmars. Hundreds if not thousands of arctic terns off to my right here. So yeah, what could be better? So today what I want to do is I want to talk about the Canon 100 to 500 millimeter zoom lens. And I have attached to that the Canon R3 body. But very specifically going to talk about the Canon 100 to 500 millimeter zoom lens. You know, if I think back to when I first started photographing birds back in the film days, which was all manual focus, there was no autofocus, I didn't even dream about photographing or even think about photographing anything that was moving, let alone birds in flight. It simply was not on the radar. But with a lens like this and now with a camera body like this that has the animal eye tracking, very possible to do. And the photos that you can now get with a combination like this is just remarkable. You know, I had the, the version 2 of the Canon 100 to 400 millimeter lens, which was a great lens. I used it a couple of times in Africa. I used it all over the place here, all over the place in North America, back where I live. But with a 100 to 500, you now have that extra 100 millimeters uh, to, to get that 500 millimeter reach. That extra 100 millimeters can make a big difference in terms of the photos that you're able to get. And with a lens like this, it's very hand holdable. This is, I mean, you know, this is one hand right now, and I'm not struggling to hold this. So hand holding and panning and, and photographing birds in flight or moving subjects, very, very possible with a combination like this. And again, with this new technology, particularly with this animal eye tracking and these mirrorless bodies, and with this particular body at 30 frames a second, wow, a complete game changer. I mean, no question about it. But with the Canon 100 to 500 millimeter lens, again, for birds in flight, what you want to do is you want to make sure you're picking up the subject just far enough out and then tracking it in. If the subject's right up on top of you and you try to get on it, you're, you're probably not going to be able to react quick enough. But if you can find the subject out far enough and you've got good wind conditions and you've got good lighting conditions and you put yourself in the right place, boy, you can find that subject, track with it, pan with it, and you're going to pull off photos again that are just going to blow you away. And a lens like this is going to be something that you're going to want to have in your camera bag if you're a bird photographer and you're a cannon shooter. Absolutely recommend this lens. So that's it. Just a quick overview, just a kind of a quick review of the Canon 100 to 500 millimeter zoom lens. I absolutely recommend it. If you're interested in a lens like that, like this, reach out to my friends at Hunts Photo. That's where I purchased my lens. They'll take very good care of you. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos here on Exploring the Natural World. And as always, remember, please help protect wildlife and help protect wild places. Cheers. OK, let's see what we can find to photograph in flight. Oh, we go. oh razor bell, razor bell. Let me find a puffin now. Puffin, 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 puffin. Nope. Oh. Here we go. Ah. This thing's unbelievable. <laughs>